Thank you for watching this tutorial on Global Plasma Solutions IEQ spreadsheet. This is an Excel spreadsheet that includes all of the mass balance equations based on ASHRAE standard 62.1, the indoor air quality procedure. This spreadsheet not only calculates the ventilation rate procedure outside air requirements, it also calculates the indoor air quality procedure outside air requirements by applying Global Plasma Solutions patented air purification technology at a known effectiveness for the contaminants of concern. So at the bottom of the spreadsheet you're going to notice multiple tabs. The first is VAV for variable air volume, uh, constant volume for a constant volume system, table 6.1 as a reference, table 6.2 as a reference, the outside air contaminants as a reference, and then the GPS product schedule which will be uh, completed based on the selections that you make throughout the uh, selection process. So in the first tab we have variable air volume. You will input zone tag, whatever that reference will be on your application. We'll say RTU-1 for this one. The facility type is a drop-down menu, and these categories are straight out of ASHRAE Standard 62. We are going to select educational facility. The zone use will be classroom ages 9 plus, but you can select whatever your application may be. The square feet in that zone, which will be, uh, we'll say 900 in this example. We're going to have 30 people. And then the ventilation effectiveness, we're going to leave at 0.8. If you're not sure what ventilation effectiveness is, if you refer to table 6.2 on the tab right here, you'll notice that the ventilation effectiveness is shown as ceiling supply of cool air is a 1. However, if you have ceiling supply of warm air 15 degrees or more above the space temperature and the ceiling return, it's 0.8. So generally, we use 0.8 as the default value in this application. So with 0.8 as the ventilation effectiveness, you would need 510 CFM of outside air using the ventilation rate procedure. So this top line is the ventilation rate method. And any box that is in yellow will require user input or just review to make sure that the values are correct. If you want to use the uh, indoor air quality procedure, now you simply put in the zone height from floor to finish ceiling. So we're going to say 9 feet. The desired outside air defaults to 5 CFM per person as shown in the formula bar times F12, which is the number of people. If you'd like to change that number, you can certainly override that value and change that to whatever value that you would like the supplier into the space and then on this application it takes 30 percent of the total supplier and uses that as the minimum uh, turn down but you can actually change that value as well so once you've input those values you want to look down here and look to find is the indoor air quality acceptable at the reduced outside air levels if this box states yes then the value that we plugged in up here for the amount of outside air that we would like to use by utilizing air purification is acceptable per ASHRAE. So in this example, we have reduced the outside air from 17 CFM per person down to 5 CFM per person using the uh, Global Plasma Solution technology. And you can look at what the steady state levels are of the contaminants in the space using the ventilation rate procedure, which this column is using 510 CFM of outside air with no air purification and this column is using the reduced outside air quantity 150 CFM using the plasma technology and so we can not only see that it's compatible all the way down the list we have yeses you'll also see the contaminant generation rate and then the filtration effectiveness for the technology for the given contaminant and then who the cognizant authority is for that application the new ASHRAE standard does require listing the cognizant authority uh, for that particular contaminant and so the last item you want to look at is the level of physical activity. How active are the people in the space? So if they're sedentary at ease, they generate less contaminants than say if they're providing exhausting effort as you would see in a gym. So you'll see the contaminants change based on the level of physical activity that you're using in your example. So once you've completed this analysis, you can quickly see we reduced the outdoor air from 510 down to 150 CFM and with a design day of 89.9 and 76.6 wet bulb with coil leaving air conditions of 51.8 and 50.7 that's a 2.6 ton reduction in this classroom if we take a standard design day of 9580 and typical 55 degrees leaving the coil 
Again, you'll see around 2.8 tons saved. And then in the winter time, if the outside air design is 40 and the supply air temperature is 95 to offset the heat loss in the space, that's a 6.3 kilowatt uh, savings on this particular example. So now we move on to the constant air volume tab. So based on the application and the system type, the mass balance equations actually change. So if you look in the appendix of ASHRAE 62 at the mass balance equations, based on where the filtration is located, whether it's in filter location A, which is recirculated air only, or filter location B, which is the mixed air stream, you will see a change in the equations. And you can select filter location as well. So we've made the assumption that the filter location is in B in the mixed air stream which we are assuming that the outside air coming in does have some contaminants in it so we need to treat that as well or you should so in this example same as the variable air volume tab the top line is the ventilation rate procedure you will input your zone tag select your facility type your zone use how many square feet that zone has the number of people in that zone and then again the ventilation effectiveness in this example we need 434 CFM of outside air and if we want to use the then, uh, the indoor air quality procedure and reduce that amount of outside air over here that's required for the ventilation rate procedure we can do that so this zone has a 10 foot from floor to ceiling height the desired outside air again defaults to 5 CFM times F12 it's 1000 CFM supplier into the space and the level of physical activity again is standing doing desk work with these values again all these equations work out we have a green box and it states that the indoor air quality is, is acceptable at the reduced levels. So in this example, you could run 95 CFM of outside air into this classroom subject to the building pressure. One key point to realize when using this software is that the building pressure needs to be checked and make sure that you're not exhausting more air than what you're actually bringing into the building. You always want at minimum neutral pressure but preferably slight positive pressure, especially in those environments in the southeast where it's hot and humid, and you do not want that uh, the moisture-laden air moving through the wall of the building because that's how you get mold inside the uh, interstitial spaces of the cavities of the wall. So in this example, we have 2.1 tons saved and then 4.3 kilowatts saved in heating mode. And then just as a point of reference, you have an outside air contaminant tab and you'll see typical concentrations. So these values in the outside air were taken straight out of the ASHRAE handbook and the handbook uses the average of the five worst air quality cities around the country and these are pretty major metropolitan areas. However, if you know what the outside air contaminants are uh, in your example or in your location, you can physically override these values and you'll note it, that it's in parts per million. So here I have CO2, it's 400 parts per million, but let's say in your locality it's 300 parts per million. Well, that will now update all of those mass balance equations over on this tab. So you want to make sure that everything still checks out. So it's best when you're using this indoor air quality software that you go ahead and fill in the outside air contaminants tab before you start looking at the variable air volume and the constant volume tab. Uh, more than 9 out of 10 times, most engineers do not ever change these values because there's never an indoor air quality study conducted at the specific job site location to even know what the outside air contaminants are. And as a point of reference, ASHRAE 62 tells us that we're supposed to do this analysis regardless if you use the ventilation rate procedure or the indoor air quality procedure. So the indoor air quality procedure is not adding any extra work to use this instead of the ventilation rate procedure. So once you've made your selections, you can come over to the GPS product schedule. And based on the type of system that you're designing, you will now need to look at what product you need to use to fit your HVAC system. Here we have a duct mount unit that provides self-cleaning. It's rated up to 4800 CFM. We have the uh, GPS iMod. This is the modular ionization system that will fit any size cooling coil in 6 inch increments and it will accept 24 volt up to 240 volt and it also has integral BAS alarm contacts. If you're designing smaller fan coil units you may want to use the FC1 which is 110 volts or the FC2 which is 208 to 240. If you have a slightly larger system you may use the GPS FC3 BAS which is 24 volt input only it's up to 3200 CFM and it also has integral dry contacts. If you're designing with ductless mini splits and you have those high wall units that are really long and narrow so they have really long cooling coils 
the GPS iRib-36, which stands for the ribbon, is a uh, plasma bar, but it's in a ribbon form that's 36 inches long, and it has a self-adhesive backing on it, so you can actually peel that off and stick that down on top of that cooling coil, and this will keep your coil nice and clean, free from mold growth, as well as allowing you to reduce the outside air, and that's rated 110 volt as well as 208 to 240. And then the last product is our new self-cleaning GPS FC32 dash AC, which means auto clean, and it's 3200 CFM, and it also contains integral dry contacts to talk to the building automation system. So this will fit nicely inside of your smaller heat pumps, fan coils, and package rooftop units. Now based on the product that you need to use on your application, you will come down to the product schedule. You'll notice that the GPS model here is DM48-AC, and that corresponds to this unit. So this would be a duct-mounted unit. You select whether it was constant volume or VAV, and these values, supply air and outside air, pull in based on which calculation you were using. It will tell you the GPS quantity required based on the supply air flow, the pressure drop, the voltage range of that product, the watts consumed, and then you can also select your mounting location for the schedule, and then it gives us the ion density for that particular product as well as the notes. So if you were designing this and want to put this on your plans, you simply highlight all that, copy and paste it, and put that right on your drawings. If you're designing and wanting to use the smaller fan coil type products, you can select which product you'd like to use. The notes change based on the product that you utilize because there are different options and features. The ion density will also change as well as the voltage and the watts uh, consumed in that particular product. The next one is the GPS iMod, the modular ionization bar. There typically will be one bar per cooling coil and there's a stainless, uh, not stainless steel, but a carbon fiber needle pair every half inch down the entire width of the cooling coil and you get 60 million ions per cubic centimeter produced per every half inch of cooling coil. So it's a significant amount of ionization being created which will keep the coil clean as well as cleaning up old cooling coils. And if you're designing an airport or a hospital, chances are the odor loads are much higher than a standard IEQ application so you will generally have two bars per cooling coil. As standard there's one bar for, per cooling coil up to 60 inches in height of thin surface area. Or if you have two coils stacked and they're not uh, 60 inches, you still may want to go to two bars because of the intermediate drain pans typically found in those applications. And then the last item is the GPS iRib-36. That's the ionization ribbon cable to go along those ductless mini-split type applications. So if you have any further questions about the indoor air quality calculations, feel free to contact your local representative or contact the Global Plasma Solutions factory at 912 three five six zero one one five or shoot us an email at sales at gpshvac.com. Thank you.